welcome to Tough Blood Boxing. I am locked in, and let's get ready to talk about it! What's good, everybody? I'm locked in. Welcome to another episode of Tough Glove Boxing. First of all, as always, I want to take this time to give a salute to all the tough girls and tough guys that apply pressure to that like button for your boy. I truly appreciate it. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you to hit that subscribe button, become part of the Tough Glove family. We are a small family, but we are a strong family. You don't have to agree with, with everything I say. All you got to do is do what I do and love the sport of boxing. Now, with that said, I know you see the picture on my screen, you saw the thumbnail, you saw the title. So let's talk about it a little bit, right? Now, keep in mind, I'm not talking about the elite level fighters at 135. This is not about Shakur Stevenson. This is not about, what's that Parkinson? Sorry guys. This is not about Shakur Stevenson. This is not about uh, Devin Haney, Javante Tank Davis, Lomachenko. We're not even talking about Ryan Garcia, even though I think everybody in my thumbnail and that we're talking about today does beat Ryan Garcia. Uh, let's just go ahead. Let's start it off with um, Keyshawn Davis, right? Keyshawn Davis won silver medals in 2019 at the Pan American Games. Then he won silver at the World Championships. And then in 2020, he won silver in the Olympics, right? So he's pretty accomplished even before coming into uh, the professional game, but since he's been here, he's put on every opponent uh, he's put on with every opponent that they put in front of him. Um, he has a lot of power, okay? Keyshawn Davis is standing at 5'9", right? He has a 70-inch arm reach, and, you know, I feel like he's definitely going to be one of the future uh, champions at the 135-pound division. I, I give it about maybe a year, maybe two years. Um, I gotta actually wonder how hungry he really is though because he recently did an interview the way he says he don't have any specific goals for boxing. He's just gonna ride it as long as he can. Now while he is uh, high level, he does have a high level skill set. You have to have some type of, I feel like map, you know? Some type of drawn up plan or, or map in order to, to know how you want to navigate your career. Otherwise, you're just going to be blowing in the wind. You know what I mean? And I think Keyshawn Davis is one of the most talented young fighters that's coming to the game right now. I think he loves the, the sport of boxing. I think he, he when, I, when I see Keyshawn Davis talk about boxing, when I see him boxing, uh, any training videos I see him do, he just, the way he talks and his passion, I just feel like he really loves the sport. And so I do think he's going to be here for a long time, but I think that he needs to start set, setting up some goals. Like, you know, if you want to be a world champion, if you want to unify. You know, do you want to be undisputed? Now, I don't doubt that he could, in the future, accomplish all of these things because it seems like he runs towards all of the smoke, right? You can't just call out Frank Martin and if, if, if you ain't ready to, 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 to put that, you know, that, that work in. You know, because Frank Martin ain't nothing to play with, right? You know, Keyshawn Davis, he said he ready for, for anybody, really, right? But he just playing this position right now. And I get that, you know. Um, he, Like I said, he has a lot of accolades even before he came into the, the professional uh, side of things. And uh, it just seems like he's on an upward trajectory from there. And I like the fact that he's calling out Frank Martin. I like that because that's what these young fighters are supposed to do. We want to get these fighters fighting while they're in their mindset of invincibility, if you will, right? Like when they feel like they're untouchable, you know, we got one person feel like he's a, uh, an immovable object. We got another one, you know, feeling like he, what, what is it between a rock and a hard place, the, the unstoppable force trying to move the immovable object, you know, that's what we need with, the, with these fighters in, in, in the game of boxing which is what will help us catch up with the UFC, right? So I do want to see these fights happen at 135 amongst the younger fighters. I'm not going to lie, I don't mind Frank Martin and Keyshawn Davis letting that simmer for a higher promotion, right? But to be honest with you, I think that when it comes to Keyshawn Davis and Frank Martin, uh, with Frank Martin, they're aiming higher. And we're going to talk about that when we get to, to the Frank Martin side of things. But I think Keyshawn Davis is definitely one of the young hungry wolves 
that's out there, ready to put it all on the line. Uh, I definitely think he wants to be great. I definitely feel like he is going to be great, right? Just his whole demeanor, his attitude, he seems very intelligent. He got some good people around him, right? And some good boxing minds around him. Of course, Stevenson, Jay Prince, he's at top rank with the other walls, you know? So, I see Keyshawn Davis going far. Now, um, like I said, we got three kings right now, possibly four, but right now we got three because Lomachenko and Devin Haney are going to settle that uh, come on the 20th. So, we got Tank, Devin, or Devin Haney, we should say first, right? Tank Davis and this of course, Stevenson. So, in the future, to me, the thumbnail that I have signifies what the next set of three kings is going to look like. And I know you see one picture on there that you might question a little bit, but we're going to talk about Jeremiah Nakathila because he definitely belongs on that thumbnail. Now, as far as Frank Martin is concerned, Frank Martin is definitely a little late. He started off a little late, but that's okay. It seems like he is um, dedicated to the sport, right? I don't see... Ever spent signing somebody, right? That he really didn't see that potential. And I don't see him putting his name behind somebody in a sport of boxing that he really don't think is gonna be that that next great thing. You know what I'm saying? We got Frank Martin. Frank Martin is 5'8, right? He has a 68 inch arm reach. He has uh, I think 17 fights, no defeats. He has 17 fights, no defeat, 12 wins by way of knockout. So you know he got power. You understand what I'm saying? And the thing about uh, Frank Martin, like with Keyshawn Davis, like I can see him moving up to 140 and even ending up at 147 when it's all said and done. Possibly even bigger than that, okay? Possibly even bigger than that. But I think that 135, I think that Frank Martin, that's just, that's the perfect weight class for him. I think that he, that's probably like so comfortable. He's short, he's compact, he's strong. He probably can make that weight with, with no problem. So all he got to do is really focus on his craft for these fights. And he seems like somebody who stays in the gym. The other thing I like about Frank Martin is when you're just talking to him, like and when I see him in interviews and, and when I see him fight and when I see him at the press conferences, you know, especially when he's fighting, he just seems like he's pulling from, you know, like a dark place, right? Like, and, and when I say that, like, it just seems like there's he has this edge about him. Like, there's something that he can tune into, you know? Like, I work out so hard because I have a lot of anger in me. And working out helps me relieve my anger so I don't go out into the world and take it out on the world. You know, a lot of people have certain edges about them that make them good at specific things, right? And I think Frank Martin, I don't know what his past is like. I didn't hear no history about him. I never see him out there in a bunch of controversial nonsense. I just see him purely focused on living a boxer's lifestyle and he just seems like a real serious dude you know what i'm saying like i'm sure he has his light moments when he's around his loved ones but he just seems like somebody that's really dedicated and so i can also see him definitely being a, a, a king out of all three of them i think he might get the opportunity quicker you know the other thing i'm going to say about frank martin is there got to be something about him because I don't hear Frank Martin really talking smack too much to anybody, but I hear his name in a lot of people's mouths. And most recently, Devin Haney came out and was like, said something about, you know, to Frank Martin. And I'm like, yo, dude, you're an undisputed world champion. Who, what do you mean he's old and he should be ready? Like, Frank Martin is like, how old did they say Frank Martin was? 28 years old, right? So that's only, what, five years senior to... You know, uh, Devin Haney, I, I guess I'm tripping because I'm like 49, right? So when I hear somebody who's 23 calling a 28-year-old old, I'm just like, what? You know what I'm saying? But, you know, taking that out of it, you know, uh, Frank still has about a good, he got at least until he's about 35, 36, possibly longer than that, you know, because you got Arthur Better Beef out there still. Knocking it down and he's what 38 39 years old. I think he might even be 40 or head in the 40 this year So, you know, it all depends on how you take care of yourself But Frank Martin he's definitely in my eyes one of the future prospects that we need to keep an eye out for not even prospects I'm sorry because right now he's already passed that he's a contender in my eyes right now and He's really the best contender and I think that you know He should his next you know, he should be getting a title shot no later than next year 
you know, to be honest, if he's at 135. That's all depending on what Devin Haney does, because he said he wants to stay in the division, you know, and, and, and after the Loma fight, and, you know, you really got Tank and Shakur Steven for him, other than those fights, who will we really going to see him fight unless he does take on Frank Martin, which I think would be a great fight, right? But... I don't know. Based on how Devin Haney looked at the last weigh-in with George Cambosos, it really looks like it's hard for him to make this weight. You know what I'm saying? And we, I want him to fight always when he's 100%. I don't want to see him fight Frank Martin weight, weight trained or any other fighter weight trained for that matter. Right? I'd rather him just move up, even though I do want to see the fights. But if it's going to be under those conditions, I just don't feel like it's going to be even. But Frank Martin, the ghost... You understand right now, I think, may be the best contender at 135 right now. You understand? And, uh, and yeah, that's what it is with Frank Martin. We all know. 17 uh, wins, no losses, 12 wins by way of knockout. Uh, we saw what he did to Michelle Verrera, which was I thought was going to be a great fight, right, with the style matchup. But he was just levels above Rivera, or at least on that night he was, because I didn't really see, you know, Rivera do too much of anything that I usually see him do, but I'm not taking up from Frank Martin, that gives him the resume ed, uh, edge out of all three of the people you see on my thumbnail, and he has some good solid uh, opponents on his resume as well, he has some tough fights and he was able to figure things out, right, and come out on top every time, now, Namibia, stand up, see, because I'm going to keep touting this dude's name, Jeremiah Nakathila, I'm going to, he's at 135, to me, he's the biggest upset threat we got in that division. I was watching the rankings, and the WBC has him ranked as number 15. And he's not really ranked by any other sanctioning body for some reason. But it's weird because when I look at the records of some of the people that they got ranked, he should be above them. But we know the politics of boxing, right? So there's nothing too surprising about that. I think that also... Out of all three of them, Jeremiah Nakathila, his back is up against the wall the most because, number one, he's 33 years old. So, you know, for his prime years, he got maybe about, what, two left of the prime years in boxing, uh, if not earlier than that. So if he's going to make something happen, he needs to make it happen now. Now, I've done um, a lot of research on Jeremiah Nakathila. I actually did a video called The Monster in the Mist. So y'all go back and check out that video. Uh, I'll put it in the end credits at the end of the... Um, the video so you can just click on that and go to that video but you know this guy is a solid fighter and and, and i think he's he's very good you know he, he's an all-around good talent right he doesn't do anything specifically you know great there's no one thing he does great but he does everything really good you know what i mean and so you know, I think that he's going to upset the Apple card because when I look at the name that they got at 135 as, as the prospects right now, you know, I, I, we, he's, he's very experienced. He has an 83% knockout ratio, right, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, he's himself is six feet, so he's the biggest one out of everybody on the thumbnail right now as far as height is concerned. And his reach, I'm, I've never been able to find his reach, but I think it may be about 70 inches, maybe 71 inches, something around the same as Keyshawn Davis. But I could be wrong, right? But for some reason, his reach is never listed. Now, he does have a couple of losses. His first loss was a robbery, though. So that's, that's just that. But the second loss was against Shakur Stevenson. And it's like I say, uh, you know, you could argue that Shakur Stevenson beats everybody on my thumbnail. Keyshawn Davis, Frank Martin, and you already beat uh, Jeremiah Naka, uh, Nakathila. So, you know, we know uh, Shakur Stevenson's style. It's very hard to land a clean punch on him. But if you're not Shakur Stevenson and you go up against Jeremiah Nakathila, you're going to have some problems on your hands. You're going to have some problems on your hands. I'm just saying that out, out of all of the contenders, he, he needs to be raised because he's not a prospect anymore. He's just not as well known because he's from South Africa. And, like, I went to go find his Twitter page. He doesn't even have a Twitter page. So, if anybody knows Jeremiah Nakathila personally, I would love to get an interview with the man. Uh, I would love to find out what he has going on. You know, on the spot, I know he has a fight coming up that I'm looking forward to seeing. I believe it, is, it may be um, this month. It's on the 20th, right? So, yeah, he's fighting on the 20th. He's fighting uh, Raymond Movatala. Okay? So, that should be... A really good fight. It's if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be on the Lomachenko uh, card. 
So, you know, y'all gonna get to see him in action. And like I said, this is gonna be a second fight at 135. And if he dominates and puts this dude away in a in, in dramatic and impressive fashion, I'm gonna need this guy to get to get a title shot or at least be fighting the top contenders within the next year or two. You know? Because I think that these three could possibly be the kings of the um, 135 pound division in the future. As far as the other people like Isaac Cruz, I think Jeremiah Nakathila beats Isaac Cruz. I don't see Isaac Cruz beating Frank Martin or Nakathila. And that's just what it is, you know. Uh, Ryan Garcia doesn't beat him. Uh, George Cambosos Jr. I would love to see any one of these three in the ring with George Favosius, George Cambosos, because George is, even though he did lose to Devin Haney, a lot of people didn't know who he was before the Tiafimo Lopez fight. I knew who he was, right? And he's a dog in that ring. He really is. And uh, these are the type of fighters that, if he goes up against Jeremiah Nakathila, that's going to be a fire fight, you know? Now, I do think he'll end up stopping. Uh, I think Nakathila will end up stopping George Cambosos Jr., right? Matter of fact, I think they all might end up stopping George uh, Cambosos Jr. So, but it'll see, still be a good fight for as long as it lasts. And, and let's not uh, forget the fact that George Cambosos Jr. has never been stopped before, right? So I wouldn't mind that fight either. Now, who else we got up there? We got Ryan Garcia. We got a few names at 135, a few good contenders right now, right? But as far as all of the contenders, all of the prospects, I think these are the three. I think Jeremiah Nakathila, a.k.a. Loki, Aqua from the Quiet Storm, I think he's the biggest upset risk, right? Which is why you don't hear a lot of people calling out his name. I think Frank Martin is uh, most likely to be a champion within the next year two years and I feel like Keyshawn Davis within the next two years is going to be a champion as well and then if that happens I wouldn't mind getting a Keyshawn Davis Frank Martin fight but if they want to fight right now you know that's fine I'll, I'll gladly accept that right but I just think that they could let it simmer for a little while longer you know I wouldn't even mind seeing Keyshawn Davis in there with a few other opponents you know he needs his Michelle Barrero you know what I'm saying? I think Frank Martin right now is is right around ready for his title shot, right? Uh, if um, Evan Spence and Thomas Crawford happen, and Evan Spence wants Frank Martin to fight Shakur Stevenson, I don't think Shakur Stevenson is going to turn that fight down. He already said whatever name that contract they put in front of him, if the money is right, he's going to sign that. So if Terrence Crawford, Evan Spence does get announced, and I'm not going to say if it is or whatever they do, I don't know what they do. But if it does get announced, I'm pretty sure that their guys are going to be fighting on their undercard. And it more than likely is going to be possibly Shakur Stevenson versus Frank Martin. I think that would be a good fight. I don't see Frank Martin beating Shakur Stevenson, but I really don't see hardly anybody beating Shakur Stevenson. So that's not taking anything away from Frank Martin. But anyway, that was my video. Get in my comment section and let me know what you think about the three people. Frank Martin, Keyshawn Davis, Jeremiah Nakathila from Namibia. You understand? Get in the comment section about your feelings. Locked in. Tough Club Boxing. I'm out. You ain't gotta go home, but you gotta get the hell up out of here.